Whatever they have to go over one big, two big mountains. Little mountains now. But it's traffic on the mountain. And Steve said, wait a minute. He got the car. Start the car. And he get out the car. It's Jonathan. Lorelai was with us too. So Lorelai was in the back with Jonathan and Sophia. And then Sammy was there. He just kept talking to me. And then beat his mother with Ellie. <laughs> I said, why are you beating your mother? He was like, he just looked at me and kept smiling. Just kept beating her. So I was like, okay. She's like, I don't know what is happening. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Your boy. The traffic really get started. In Jersey, we have rubbernecking. That was a lot. A lot. It happens like every day at a certain time. Generally between 8 and 9 and between 4 and 5, you have rubbernecking on the parkway. So people will pay the extra, extra money to um, drive the turnpike. Because they know it's open for business. So you always look ahead, right, to see, oh, I see rubbernecking, let me go pull off the highway. Because rubbernecking is a picture of what happens when, not when there's an accident, right? But if there's an accident and people start looking, rubbernecking occurs. Or, uh, if, if you're driving and somebody stops short, <coughs> at 8 o'clock in the morning, then you have, <coughs> all day long, rubbernecking, guarantee, will be on the parkway at, at 5.30, 6 o'clock at night. Because somebody stopped short. Rubbernecking. If we start rubbernecking on the mountain, I would lose my mind because I'm deathly afraid of heights. Deathly afraid. And then you really don't see, you can't tell you're on the mountain. It's just me knowing we're, we're on a mountain. <laughs> While you're riding it, it does not it ever happen. You're riding on something, riding on a roller coaster. You cannot tell you're actually uh, involved with the dips and everything like that. You cannot tell what really is going on. Why? Because most of the scariest things, they'll twist you and turn your ear, <clears throat> take it out, take it up, take it down. Oh, I love that. I love it. It's like Bar City. I love it. It's awesome. But it happens in like 30 seconds, and by the time it's over, if you step off the roller coaster and you look at what just happened, that's when you're scared. You never know what's really going on. That's why I say, God give me not 20-20, but I want to 40-40, uh, 60-60 peripheral. I want to see everything. I want to see the situation as you see it. I said, I feel sorry for her. Holy Spirit said, she said, I can't wait till the apartment 3, 3 and the apartment 8, 4 is empty anyway. And Holy Spirit said, don't pay no mind to it. Go to sleep. I got it. You ain't going nowhere until I say you go. I said, okay. Oh. <laughs> Nevertheless, he talks a lot, right? He do, he talk a lot. He asked, he said, what, and I'm like, what God will save you from my hand? Are you kidding me? You are king. And you look at them and say, what God will save you from me? I'm a king. That's a God. Mm -hmm. I'm a king, but I'm human, right? God or omniscient. If it's, if it's God, a God is omniscient. That's why I can't, I can't do, I can't do Muhammad. Hey God, right? Uh, booters. I get no booters. Because <laughs> they're not omniscient. You need that statue. You need that thing, that gold thing, but it ain't really gold because if you bite it, your, te your teeth go right into it. Yeah, I need something that's omniscient. I'm sorry. That's a, that's a qualification for me for it to be a God. It's got to be omniscient. Jesus walked on earth before us, but he is God. Because then he left of his own volition. Did God say a rocket ship down here to go get him? No. He left. And he's still here with me. For 2,000 years afterwards, he's still making a, a home for me. John 14, 6, he said, I go away to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you may be also. So if John 14, 6 is true, he's still away to keep the light. Uh, right, he's still ahead then, right, making a home for me here. While I'm down here, he's still inside of me. At the same time, he saved me. Because the helmet that I wear, the salvation, the helmet of salvation, right? So he's everywhere for me. He's omniscient. Buddha can't do that. Buddha can't. Mm -mm. Buddha, Buddha said no. He no. Mm, he don't want to do that. He don't want to do that. He would rather have a cookie. He's fat. I'm saying. The qualification for me to have a earthly king is that he be um skin. He be human. 
See, they had God that ruled over them as their king. So he took care of them and did not tax them. In order to have an earthly king that would walk with you that you can see, he must tax you because he lives off of your taxes. He is not omniscient. He cannot create money for himself, right? Jesus said, Peter, to the water and said, go get the first fish you see and open the mouth. And when you open the mouth, pay my tax and pay yours too. Jesus made every single one of them fishes in the ocean have money in their mouth. If you can make it one, you can make all of them, right? You knew that once I went there, if I went in the ocean and dug my hand in and pulled it out, they had no fishing rods, they had nets. But he's only going in to get one fish. So I imagine Peter was like, mm, his hand in the water and pulled the fish out. The first fish he could get. And that one just happened to have a coin in his mouth that he could pay his temple tax with. Jesus told them. For if you had faith, the size of must a seed, you would say to this fish, <laughs> have a coin in your mouth, or be cast into the sea. I said, you always know it's God. I told Tim, them, I try to not to overload Pastor Tim um, Abernathy and Victoria when I was at their house. Abernathy is not his last name. It's the last name I give him because of the way he preached. He's very nice, very sweet when he preached like a black man. He preached like a black man that's been in seminary for 50 years. <laughs> that's been in seminary for 50 years and just never left. Liked it and stayed. <laughs> I was like, you, I, I don't know if I could. If you te- taught a class, I don't think I would take it. <laughs> I would run. Because I'm not that smart. When he preaching, I'm like, Ugh, I'm not that smart. And he be telling my books. I don't read. I don't read. I read the Bible. That's it. So I try not to. I try to put too much on them. But I said, um, "Did you notice there's always a twofer with God?" I said, "This man that knows, he knows, he knows so much about the word. He's like Jamie. I want to see your blogs. He's like, what you doing? This is Jamie on his blog like two and a half hours, three hours long. I said, all of them are two and a half hours and three hours long." He's like, Jamie, you did that that long? I said, yes. I mean, I can say I'm doing it, but the phone is not going to lie. It says it right there. You won't leave out my phone. It says it right there. There's over a thousand of them things on there. Yes. I'm not that smart. So honestly, when I repeat stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating it because I'm explaining it to me. <laughs> so, so it sticks at me. So I, I work in redundance and, 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 and repetition and redundance and repetition and redundance. <laughs> Stop. He's a king. He's a god. I said, I, I, I had to say something, Pastor David. And I said, I was like, honestly, if heaven is watching, even if we agree, even if we agree that I will do that, that I will not say Jesus' uh, name, or I will not say anything about the Bible. Even though I, while I'm not talking to her, even though I agree to myself, in my private time, when I be in my room, eat my press suits, I don't eat no press suits, I don't like press because I got salt on me. But in my private time, when I eat some fruit, or my fruit shakes with my Brussels sprouts and stuff in it, those are good. In my private time, if I say something like in my head to me, if I say to me that I will agree not to say the name of Jesus. Do you realize? Do you realize? Because when I whisper it to myself, whether I say it to myself, whether I think it, uh, say it, mention it, write it on a tablet, uh, type it out for somebody to see. What happens with my testimony? What happens when heaven talks about me? I said, I want God to be able to testify about me like he did with Job. Do you know my servant, Jamie? Have you considered Jamie, stupid? Mama? Hallelujah. I want to say say, have you considered Jamie, stupid? <laughs> God had a little bit of attitude and Satan came into the meeting because Satan came in late because Satan always come late because Satan's on his belly. And no bus is going to pick him up. No bus is going to leave on our bus. And even if he put you out for change inside the coin thing, they will want to take his change because he's reaching for underneath his belly to get the change. That's nasty. Especially in the summertime. Nobody wants your sweaty change. So they kick him off the bus. They don't want to want it. So he gets to the meeting late. They still got meetings about us. He talk, that, that they, the demons try to, the demons will be want to do stuff to us. So they have meetings. Idiots. <laughs> I say it because they want to do stuff. Else. I said, "Why would you? You so dumb. Why would you want to? I wouldn't let them, if I got kicked out of heaven because I was evil. I wouldn't want to go to a meeting with God. That's embarrassing. Cause you know we got the courtroom uh, rules. They gotta act a certain way. You can't come in. You can't slither in on your belly. 
But you don't say you got to do it that way because it's on his belly. And I don't know about you, but no scripture in the Bible stands him up. They say he can appear to you as an apparition, right? An apparition of light. I appear as an angel of light. Uh, there is no angel of light. There are angels and there is Jesus who is the light. Uh, but we mix it up and so when we hear angel of light, we all of a sudden give a bomb to Satan. Do you know how evil that is? Because you are giving uh, the ability to Satan to be more than he is. He was in heaven and he got fired. He was nothing but a light bearer. That's the, name, that's the meaning of the name Lucifer. He was a light bearer. He got fired. Right? So when he got fired, he lost the ability to bear the light and we took his job we were given his job and so we do it now if I go on that text box and I don't bear the light when God tells me to I will bear it properly I'm the hired as a Lucifer I will get fired it's coming out of my back onto my belly I'm not my, I will develop belly wounds that's just my picture of it and then I won't be able to take the bus anyway to, to get to the heavenly meetings right I won't I won't get there on time I won't get no donuts I feel like they serve donuts at the meeting the demon meeting they got demon meetings Otherwise, you want to have people down here saying, don't say Jesus to me on prayer. <laughs> we are inspired by angels. When I write poetry, you don't think that comes from me. I'm inspired by an angel who's, who's walked with me and known what I've been through. And so the reason why I write poetry the way that I do is to reach a certain audience. When I did Jesus, and is my identity. I was in my church with people that I love. I spent all my time with, and there's a church that predominantly black that came there to visit us. We should see it. They all sat on the left side. If I'm facing the audience, they all sat on the left side, and my church is on the right side. Right? So after I thought I finished doing a poem. Pastor Tim always talks back to me when I'm doing poetry. When I Finish doing the poem. Pastor Tim clapped a little bit. Miss Crowell clapped a little bit because they love me. That's just what they do. But when the I finish doing the poem, that church that's predominantly black that understands that's not easy being cheesy. Huh? They got up and started screaming and pumping their fists in the air because they know how about that kind of They can tell when the anointing is present and they know how about that kind of when the gift of God is in the room with them. If I preach one second, not to say Jesus when I'm around you. Don't think about it. Oh, they don't want to say Jesus. You didn't say Jesus because they don't like you. They don't trust you. You did something wrong. I didn't do nothing wrong. They don't want me to say Jesus because they're scared of what happens. That act, the name of Jesus, uh, demons tremble. I don't care. If I don't want to listen to the name Jesus, I'm going to start shouting. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no you say no name unless you believe it. So what you want to do is be to, you want me to stop believing. So that way I can't be a witness for him. Not that person specifically, but there's a demonic attack. I'm not dumb. I have the sermon of spirits. <laughs> I can see. It's nasty. <laughs> it's barfy. <laughs> what do you want from me? It's common sense. Don't face law. Fix a tenant. Fix a tenant, fix a ceiling. Do a job. Something. Do something right. We still have not talked about the fact that this the, it's, it's, the system is still broken. You deflecting and talking about my, my Jesus ability. Every time I come on this text box, I'm going to say the name Jesus. I'm like, glory. Even though I say, Gloria. The Gloria. Gloria. Remember Gloria on Touch by Angels? I did not like my name, so I tried to change my name to Gloria when I was in third grade. And I would not respond to anybody that called me Jane. My teacher got mad. Miss Rinaldi, she got mad. I'm telling you, I remember Miss Rinaldi. She got mad at me. She was like, your name is not Gloria, it's Jamie. It's a name. Tell me why the name is beautiful. Give me access to understand why the name Jamie is great. See, that's why I, I, I work with kids. I've always worked with kids. I understand. If they come sometimes, I don't like my name. Are you kidding me? Your name is so beautiful. Do you know your name? She was like, you don't like Samuel. I was like, are you kidding me? I didn't want to tell the truth at that time, at that time, because I was mad at some of them a little bit. But I didn't want to tell the truth at that time, because I, I spent more time with Samuel. I said, I like, I like Samuel good and I like the rest of them. <laughs> I love 
Samuel. Don't say that. I love Samuel. You insult me. I mean, Samuel, I, his first name means the same thing that my middle name does. Elizabeth, Samuel. That baby is favorite, chosen, right, by God, and he hears God. I said, you got to, he doesn't want love, y'all. <laughs> I said, yeah, I can fight him all the time, but that means I love him. <laughs> you just express it different ways. At the name of Jesus, demons tremble. So you are, you don't want me to make no demons tremble. Why? You guys are asking your question, your sub questions. When people start talking crazy, they'll have you doing whatever, um, whatever they want you to do. And more than not, they don't, they don't really want you to do it, but they're being used. Sometimes they don't even know the, the intricacies, right, of what they're actually saying. First of all, you know, you cannot tell me not to use my religion. To not say my what I want to say in my religion. You can kick me out. You can try. And I will just get up and leave. Because God's got you. <laughs> you took $95 from me. And God told me, he said, Let's go. let it go, Jamie, because it's going to cost a lot more than $95 to pay for what she has to pay for. Let it go. I said, okay. He told me that this months ago. And then, I didn't know an inspection was happening. Then, an inspection happened. What would have been inspected, or would have been expected, if I had agreed to her terms? If she had said, from the, when I was on Jonathan Street, looking for a place to stay, I am a Satanist. I am a non-believer, and I am a Satanist. You cannot say the name of Jesus around me. You cannot uh, uh, use Jesus' name. I, absolutely not. I'm not like my pastors. They have a vocabulary. I come from, from a place where it was actually hard and tough even growing up. They were shooting all the time. So we use Jesus. We said Jesus all the time. Five days a week, I was in church. Don't, you can't stop me. Glory be to God. I come from a place where it's real, where death and life, you meet death and life every day as a kid. And there was one man that stayed, Jesus. And so you will reach your hand into my mouth and I tear them up at her and try to pull him out. You can pull my tongue out if you want. But that word have I hid in my heart, Psalm 119, verse, that I might not sin against thee. I've got his word uh, in my heart. I don't care what you take. Uh, you will take my tongue out, the teeth out, the uvula out. Uh, tell me not to say the name of Jesus. Uh, I didn't try to remove my tongue. The Holy Spirit told me, not only is she telling you that, but that's why the, the, that's how Satan is using Lindsay's um, smoking. Lindsay's doing it to hurt me. She is, definitely. She's doing it to hurt me. Every time she does the water, every time she um she uh, she uh she starts stomping, then she smokes. She will stop to smoke and then start stomping again. Yeah. It's sad, but she's definitely doing it to hurt me because she knows it's one of the things that hurt me. She just she gets up in the morning, just does it because it's morning. <laughs> it's okay. He said, "Because you're doing this, it's a spiritual attack, and everybody doesn't have the same spirits." So I'm like, why don't people see this? One person tried to take the name of Jesus out of my mouth, and then the other one is trying to cause me in a prolapsis. My tongue is swelling up. My, my, my uvula hurts. I can barely do my blogs. There's someone who I just don't do it anymore because the back of my throat is rotting. But God said, I told you, put on the mic. It doesn't matter what they do. It's my job to just do what God is telling me. Hallelujah. He said, I don't care if you put put Vaseline down your throat. I told you to put on the mic. Let me worry about them. He said, I've got a breastplate, uh, I've got a helmet, uh, and I've got shoes. Uh, let me worry about them. Uh, she can stop all she want. You worry about putting on your peace shoes. Uh, she can stop all she want. I can stop too. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I said, Did you hear what they said? There was a prefix, right? And a prefix.
prefix, right? Here we go. A prefix is like preference, right? And the prefix has preference in the word. And what happens with the, the prefix's preference is because you, if you add a prefix onto the word, it changes the word. It fixes it before. It fixes it. That's why it's prefix. It fixes it before. Pre means before, right? So, so it fixes it before. So if I, and if, I, if, I, if you say if you say the wrong word to me, if I have to see. Hallelujah, the condescending. I said, okay, I understand the sin because I think somebody up from, up from high up is coming down, right? Or coming down with something. When you say condescending, that means you're coming down in the wrong way. You're coming down on me in the wrong way. But God says she doesn't have a vocabulary because a uh, con means two. Con implies two. Come. C O M as a Mary implies a community. It implies a group of people, but con always implies too. So if you say I'm condescending, are you calling me a liar? Or you say I'm trying to con you by coming down on you? I don't understand it. No, you want me to put me, you want to put me in a place uh, above where I should be. See, here we go. I said this is the reason why uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were brought to Babylon. Selah. Oh, I know what your dream means. Yeah, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I heard it's a simple message sir with a really holy thing yeah I know what your dream means oh I know what your dream means yeah I know what your dream means God has told me to th- th- give the word about what I've seen and what I heard it's a simple message sir with a truly holy thing Oh, I know what your dream means. Daniel went before Nebuchadnezzar, and he still said holy, didn't he? He had to. By the time Nebuchadnezzar died, we have the impression that Nebuchadnezzar had been uh, converted in his mind somehow. He was converted. He was different. But then Belshazzar came in. And what happened? Me name me name take all you thousand. They had right tenders on the wall. It means you have been weighed in the balance and have come up wanting. What balance and what why am I wanting against it? What I'm weighing a balance, right? You put me against a balance thing. God believes in balance scares, scales, right? So you put me in um you weigh me, when you weigh me, you, you put me in a balance, right? And when I'm weighed against something, I come up wanting, that means I have less than what I'm supposed to have. Uh, what am I being weighed against here? Oh, I know what your dream means. Yeah, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word by what I've seen and what I heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy thing. Yeah, I know what your dream means. Do you? Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came in on the tail end of something. You know what? what the way that it's depicted is that they took people, uh, they exiled people to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar did. Because Nebuchadnezzar was, I mean, he was powerful. So he exiled people from Israel to Babylon because they first of all, or Judah to Babylon, sorry. Because they weren't acting like they had good sin, right? They were worshiping other idols. They were worshiping, they had, they had eubulists that had people let people turn their eubulists into statues. And so they, they were saying what they wanted them to say. The blood of Jesus. So Nebuchadnezzar came to take all these people, right, from Judah to Babylon. He was exiling them. Then he saw the cups. Because he realized there would not be a mine mine if he had not said cuppe cuppe. <laughs> cuppe play play. Give me a C. C, you got your C, you got your C. Give me a cup, cup, you got your cup. What's up? Come on, it's, why do you need the cups? He took it as he exiled the people, and then he said, "Everything that belongs, everything that's here, take it." It's, in a, it's, a, it's, a, it's depicted and it's understood. It's understood. I have the understanding that he knew before he left that these cups and plates belong to the Hebrew God. He knew.
if you take them anywhere. You have to be careful because what people tell you to do, they will create right, a statue for you. Not because you did not fall because of the cups. But Belshazzar died. He could move higher from where he was. He still was a bad king, a bad person. But me, 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 take well, you person. By the time you see the handwriting on the wall, God is already on his way to you. Because he so they saw the handwriting on the wall and Belshazzar died that night. When, 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 when Nebuchadnezzar had, had the dream, he said, okay, find the wise man that can tell me the truth about the dream. Because he told them, he was very smart, Nebuchadnezzar was smart. But he told them, he said, I want to find somebody that can tell me what I dream and then tell me what it means. The, the, so, the, the, so, it's kind of like this, kind of like, you want me to tell you what you know and then tell you what you don't know. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word by what I've seen and what I heard. It's a simple message with a truly holy theme. Yeah, I know what your dream means. Daniel was interpreting dreams for Nebuchadnezzar. And because he interpreted a dream that nobody could interpret. See, they were, they, were, they were challenging everybody there the entire time they were there. When they first got there as boys, he took, he took the, uh, Nebuchadnezzar took the people, then he took the uh, stuff, and he said, yeah, he, um, take the strongest and the most uh, healthy looking boys. Because they're going to serve me as, as wise men. He wasn't trying to kill them. He wanted to keep them. So he said, I, I, I want children. So he want to keep them. Don't kill me. Keep me. I want God. Don't kill me. Keep me. I mean, I say I want God. I mean, I say, I mean, I say how I want God. I mean, I say uh, the, how, it's supposed, how it's supposed to look when I may not know how it's supposed to look when I want God. But I'm telling you, I want God. Don't kill me. Keep me. There were other people. I mean, we look at Ahab and Jezebel. They worshiped the god Molech. And Ahab was an Israelite, and Jezebel was a Philistine. And they worshiped the god Molech. And Molech is known for making, uh, for, for, uh, for, the God that is one of the rules that the God has, the God itself has, um, to make the children walk through the fire. So kids have died because of uh, what a, a little G. They think that their God, the little G, is saying. Because more like it's nothing. So more like it's stand up and say, uh, bring me that child through the fire. No, don't walk around, don't walk around the coals. Come back and walk through the fire. Uh, the the Molex didn't do that. Molex didn't do that. More like has about as much common sense as my mole. <laughs> it's true. But kids have died, right? So kids are not that high on the hierarchy list. That's why when Jesus says, suffer the children to come unto me and forbid them not for such, uh, for of such is the kingdom of God. Children matter in the kingdom of God. Why? Because it's counterintuitive. So kids will accept. Whatever they have an idea of what they're accepting, I'm telling you. Like I was sitting there and Samuel was going bonkers. He was driving me crazy. I've talked about this on the block. And I, was, I said, I can't take it anymore because Christina didn't want anybody to turn on any TVs in the house before 11 o'clock in the morning. I said, I can't take it anymore. I turn on TV. And on the TV, I put worship. She said, Jamie, don't you know I want no TVs on? I said, but uh, Christina, this is more, because he's driving crazy. I don't say it like that, but you know, he's driving crazy. Like he's screaming. And he was not even taking breaths. I don't think he's taking breaths. I think it's just uh, hours and hours of screaming. I can't handle it. I said, I can hear him through my noise canceling earphones. That's too much. That's too much. First thing I turn on, of course, I turn on, I turn on um, the blessing. No, Carrie Job, Stephen Furtick, Chris, whatever that guy's name is. Blessing, the song. I started worshiping. I was like, "Thank you, Jesus." And I looked up both my hands. I was like, "Thank you, Jesus." I looked my hands high. Samuel looked at me and looked his hand way up in the air. Now the thing's a thing. He looked his hands high up in the air, not just at his ear like we do sometimes. We don't want people to see us like the mommy and poppy group. They might not invite me to the mommy and poppy group. They see me lift my hands too high. I was about to about that. Tell about that baby put his hand way up in the air. He looked at me, put his hand up in the air, and then looked at me again to make sure I was still doing it. The Bible says, "Train up a child in the way that they should go." So when his parents walk away from the room, he should still be getting training. Anybody that loves him is still going to be training. 